Hello everyone, welcome to Module 2, Unit 4. We're going to be talking about two qualitative methodologies today. The first is called Photo Voice, and the second are Go-Along Interviews. So I want to start with our learning objectives. We're going to, by the end of this presentation, I hope that you'll be able to define photo voice and go along and review methodology, identify the key goals of both of these methods, explain the benefits of photo voice and go along interviews, and describe how photo voice and go along interviews can be used to promote health equity. So we're going to start by talking about photo voice. Photo Voice is a participatory action research uh, approach, or it's one of the methods within participatory action research. You may have also heard that called community-based participatory research. Uh, these are both approaches to research. They're not methods in and of themselves. So Photo Voice is one method within PAR or CBPR. And both PAR and CBPR, as they're frequently called by their acronyms, are collaborative research approaches in which academic researchers or professional researchers collaborate with community members or lay folks to investigate um, an issue of importance to the community. And what makes these approaches unique beyond that collaborative aspect is that they really challenge traditional constructions of knowledge production and they reposition community members or lay folks as research partners and as researchers, uh, acknowledging that they are indeed experts in their own lives and their own communities. And so in PAR and CBPR, the researcher, the academic researcher really acknowledges, hey, I don't know everything and I certainly can't address these different issues or public health issues without collaborating directly with the people that are being affected by these issues. So it really kind of flips research on its head the way that a lot of us have been uh, trained. And so, like I said already, photo voice is a type of a participatory action research or community-based participatory action research approach because it really is something that's done in partnership with community members. So here are the definitions and goals of photo voice. It is a process by which people can identify, represent, and enhance their community through a specific photographic technique. And though I'm going to mainly talk about photos, photo voice can really incorporate a video or other types of mixed media. For example, a podcast could work. But traditionally, when you think of photo voice, you think about pictures. And so the goals of Photo Voice are to enable people to record and reflect on their community strengths or concerns. So that's kind of a broad way to use Photo Voice, or more specifically to address a specific issue or phenomenon. Uh, a major component of Photo Voice is the promotion of critical dialogue and knowledge about these issues among groups of people who are experiencing the issue and living in the community. And so a lot of times, though professional or academic researchers might be engaging community members in a photo voice study, it's really the community members whose critical dialogue and thought on these issues that's, that's the, the most powerful aspect traditionally. And sort of the long-term goals of photo voice or the more specific goals are to share these findings um, that emerge from this photography and discussion process with policymakers and other people who are change makers or decision makers in communities. And so what makes Photo Voice really nice is that it's quite flexible. Uh, it's very iterative, meaning that um, the process can change at any point, depending on the needs of the research and those involved. It's appropriate for lots of age groups, so it's been used with uh, middle schoolers, it's been used with seniors, it's been used with folks experiencing homelessness. It's really a method that can be used uh, by a lot of different kinds of communities and different age groups. And one of the ways that people think about photo voice is a way to engage folks with more marginalized social positions or identities in this participatory 
participatory research process, either giving them or, or sharing control and power with these community members who may traditionally be left out of the research process and only be, quote, subjects rather than really participants and researchers themselves. And like I said in the previous slide, photo voice can be used broadly sort of go out and document community needs and assets in, in, in a community or in a geographic region, or it can be really specific, for example, to investigate or to examine housing instability and homelessness. Or there's a, a host of other issues you could explore with photo voice, and I'm going to go to an example in just a moment. So the photo voice process, uh, here I have it laid out in about six steps. Uh, the first two, and you know, the, like I said, the process is iterative and it's different depending on the needs of the process and the people involved. But the, the typical process are the first two steps are to take photos and then select photos to analyze. So a group of researchers consisting of potentially lay researchers or community members and academic researchers may go out and they may decide we're going to take uh, pictures that explore homelessness in our community. And so they might take dozens and dozens of pictures each, especially with cell phones and you know other kinds of technology to allow us to take these digital photos. But then the group may come back together and of the 30, 50, 100 photos taken by the group, they may select four from that specific day of photography to kind of dig deeper. And that's where step three comes in. The people who take the photos generally will kind of tell the story about what that photo means to them or why they chose to take it. And then in a group setting, everyone will talk about what is what is the meaning behind these photos. And so a popular way to do that or a common way to do that is using the showed method. And you see the aspects of showed laid out on your screen. So the first question is, what do you see here? What is really happening here? How does this photo, how does what, how is what's captured in this photo relate to our lives? Why does this problem, concern, or strength exist? And what can we do about it? And so the way that I've used this in projects is uh, have people have almost a worksheet where they respond to each of these prompts in writing, and then we open it up as a group discussion and people share what they wrote. So that sort of independent, critical, narrative reflection, I think, is a nice way to have people um, you know, begin to do some, some thinking on their own and then open that up. But if you have a group that has any literacy concerns or writing is not feasible, it's totally acceptable to just do the showed method verbally in, in, in a group discussion. Step four or five might happen, uh, you know, several sessions down the line because you may take photos, do the showed method, and sort of go back and forth over several meetings, several weeks, several hours, whatever this process is, is going to look like for your project. Um, and then, you know, as you've moved through hopefully several showed sessions around a variety of photographs related to your constructs of interest, you'll start to use that photography and that dialogue to identify issues, themes, or theories that are emerging from that analytic process. And then as a group, really, with especially those community members, those lay researchers, driving the process, identifying solutions and or recommendations based on your inquiry. And then the final step is to share those findings and recommendations with policymakers, community makers, or excuse me, community leaders and other influencers. And this could be in a community forum, this could be in some sort of blog, website, podcast. There's a lot of different ways that this information can get out. Um, but the more visual the process can be so that you can use those photographs and these narratives to actually show people your findings, that can be really powerful. And here is an example of a photo voice study. Uh, this has a lot of really practical implications. Agrawal et al. 2015, and you can see the full citation at the end of, of the presentation. Um, and this is a study, it was participatory action research with college students with disabilities, and the goal was photo voice for an inclusive process, or an inclusive campus, rather. And so you see there's two photographs here with some quotes uh, next to them, and these quotes are really that narrative uh, explanation that the photographers used. So the first problem that you see represented on the right side is a shrub overgrown uh, outside of a, a set of stairs presenting danger to individuals with vision impairment. And so the action the group identified was a photo, it was to present this photo to university facilities. And apparently, as a result of, of 
this photo and, and the dialogue that came along with it, the bush was immediately removed. And then on the left side, here's another photo. This is a problem identified by the group in which service animals uh, were not allowed in university football stadiums. Seating reserved for persons with disabilities was isolated from the other seats. And so the action identified by this group of uh, participatory research participants was that they worked with disability services um, to ensure that that uh, service animals and people with disabilities could be uh, able to be in the stadium in the seats uh, with sort of everyone else. And so th these are a really nice example of two very clear photos that depict some much deeper issues, but also with very tangible solutions. So next I want to talk about the go along interview. And some of you may have heard this referred to as a walk along interview or a walking interview really sort of all the same thing. Um, I think go along is nice because it represents that the, the, the academic researcher, the professional researcher is really going along with that participant or with that person they're partnering with on the research study. And the go along interview is an interview in which the participant and the interviewer move through the participant's quote action space. So that could be a physical space or a virtual space. And the interviewer really is asking a lot of the same questions they would ask if the two were sitting across from each other at a table, uh, but they're kind of moving through a certain setting, again, either virtual or physical. And those questions are Maybe they're identified ahead of time, semi-structured or unstructured, open-ended questions, but the process is iterative such that the interviewer can kind of respond to what the participant is pointing out or t discussing as they're moving through that action space. And it really gives an opportunity for the researcher to get a, a better understanding of the context of the participant's narrative and their experience. So why use the go-along interview method? Well, it's really nice because it's appropriate for qualitative inquiry into health and place or into health and space. Uh, it places the participants' narratives and their insights into that physical and virtual context. So it really allows us to get a deeper understanding of what someone is describing, of what someone is detailing. It, the visual cues in the environment help to kind of further that interview and prompt comments or insights from the participant that might not come up if they were, again, sitting across from each other at a table or in this sort of stagnant uh, position. It's also really nice for rapport building between the participant and the interviewer. It gives them an opportunity to sort of have a, a more comfortable conversation in a more normal or, or maybe more uh, typical setting for two people to interact rather than in sort of a closed space at, sitting at a table. And uh, like photo voice, it's iterative, so, uh, you know, it's, you're able as a researcher to respond to things in real time and make changes uh, to your interview kind of goals as, as they move forward. If something really interesting emerges as you're walking with your participant, you can say, hey, let's, you know, if you're, if you're amenable to it, let's sort of follow this thread of thought and talk more about this specific thing. But it's also very participant guide, guided and participant driven. So putting a lot of the um, power or the idea is to really shift power into the participants' hands so that they are the ones who are, in a sense, leading a lot of the aspects of the interview. So here is an example of a study uh, where the researchers used go-along interviews, and uh, the study was called Helping Young People Stay Afloat, a Qualitative Study of Community Resources and Supports for LGBTQ Adolescents, and this is by Eisenberg et al., published last year in 2017, and again, uh, the reference will be at the end of the presentation. And so this study uh, really was, they set out to understand, you know, what are the different resources and supports within LGBTQ young folks' neighborhoods or areas where they spend time um, that are, are that are supportive? Maybe what are the things that are missing? What, what supports aren't there that young folks really need? And so these in this study, the interviewers began at a location of the participants choosing, and then they proceeded by car or public transit or by foot uh, to move around the participants, quote, action space. Uh, the distance covered during the interviews ranged from anywhere from a mile, so you can imagine that may have been on foot versus over 30 miles, which could be public transit or by car, sort of depending on the, the needs of the interviewer and where the participant wanted to take the interviewer. And 
As they moved through these action spaces, probes and follow-up questions were used to draw additional information about the characteristics of the places that young people were talking about, which made them feel safe, which were fun, which were welcoming, which were supportive. And participants were asked to kind of point out areas where maybe, or take the interviewer to areas where there weren't resources and discuss where resources they would like to have and, and what they should look like. So now that we've talked about these two methods very briefly, but hopefully you've got a good understanding of what they are and, and what you can do with them and what their purpose is, let's talk about promoting health equity through photo voice and through go-along interviews. So I know that in module one, unit two, you learned that health inequities are differences that are avoidable, unfair, and unjust, caused by socioeconomic and political context and related to power, privilege, and prestige. And here we have a definition that really sort of backs up what you already learned um, from the Robert Wood Foundation. The author is brought on it at all. And um, here, excuse me, we explain that health equity means that everyone has a fair and just opportunity to be healthier and really is dependent on removing obstacles to health. Here is a sort of a the process of of working towards health equity in public health, in research. And while these things sort of lead to one another, again, they are iterative, they might not always happen in order. And so I want to point out that the blue box and the green box are really two ways, two of the first steps in achieving health equity. And I think photo voice and interview methodology really support these two things. So in the blue box, identify important health disparities that are of concern to key stakeholders, especially those affected. Uh, identify social inequities and in access to resources and opportunities needed to be healthier. And then the second is change policies, laws, systems, environments, and practices to eliminate inequities in the opportunities and resources. And so what makes photo voice and interview methodology really special is that they're both collaborative and they're both participant driven, meaning like in box one, they're really uh, going to focus on issues and disparities that are relevant to those affected. They both facilitate participant or community voice, and that is one way to, again, shift power from the academy, from these you know, more professionalized researchers to the people who are living these experiences or dealing with these issues every day. Um, they both focus on health within an environmental or a social context, which really are, are some of the ways in which we can intervene beyond the individual level on health inequities. They use visual and narrative ways to demonstrate community health, so again, making it easier uh, for maybe people who aren't as familiar with what's going on, or really a way to tell policymakers this you can see right here or you can hear right here what is going on in these communities. And I think really importantly, they both potentially lead to practical implications and solutions, which relate directly to box number two, help us to change policies, laws, environments, and practices to eliminate inequities and to change opportunities. So here are those references that I mentioned. Um, you can take a screenshot of this. I imagine you can come back and look at these references later. This is, these are all the references that I used throughout the presentation. And I just really want to thank you for listening to this presentation today. I hope you found this information valuable, and I really hope that you're able to incorporate photo voice and or walk along in your future public health practice or research. And now you can go ahead and go to the quiz for this module. Thank you so much.